So Chris, uh, you didn't get a uh, nice music introducing you. So we just got straight ahead directly into the presentations. And I am so sorry that that uh, Tim had to cancel and you were just thrown into uh, to talk to me again. Poor you. <laughs> we'll hit the ground running, no doubt. Thank you. Yeah. So how are, how are you? Extremely well, thank you. Um, okay. uh, this is uh, obviously uh, interesting times for us, but uh, we're moving forward. And uh, the good news is that many of our customers are actually um, uh, benefiting from um, an upsurge in, in a lot of volume. Uh, we're buying different oh, stuff. That's nice. Uh, yes. yes. Mm. So, uh, so it's very positive for some, but of course others are uh, affected. Um, mm. uh, it's it's kind of funny. I don't know if you know that, but V Press from the UK they have this crown bar every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, you know, it was like I think it was like I have only attended one time. It's like a webinar kind of thing, which is uh, very funny because it's uh, more like free talking about subjects that are let less controlled than this one, for example. Um, I think it was in that session I heard that uh, you know sometimes you know some companies are actually very successful during the Corona crisis, like packaging mm -hmm. companies, label companies, uh, obviously protection producers, right? Um, and do you? I mean, uh, the reason I'm, I'm you know dragging a little bit is because uh, why shouldn't we celebrate the successes even though we also have a pandemic? <laughs> Indeed. Um... I mean, as as you know, Martin, my um, my my role is uh, uh, PSP Global Head of Sales at yeah. uh, HP Solutions. So, so my job is to help print service providers around the world um, not only um, connect with uh, customers and brands and print buyers, etc., in an automated way, uh, but also to help them grow the business. So, yes. so a number of them are actually adapting and thinking carefully about how they can shift away from more more general commercial print and take advantage of some of the B two C work, um, where it's more personalised, etc. That we as consumers are all now buying for our families. Mm. And uh, yeah, and and you know that points out a very good uh, fact that if you uh, if you are a company you always have to adapt to the reality that we're in, right? I mean, so you have, if you can't sell to this customer, you have to sell to somebody else, right? Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. and, and look, let's face it, print service providers today are under huge amounts of pressure, whether it's COVID, whether it's margin erosion, order count increasing, moving towards B2C, run length shortening, downwards price pressure, you know, headcount costs, unfortunately, remain the same. But, but the smart PSPs are really waking up. They've woken up, many of them, to the reality that things have got to change. And that is the, one of the reasons why they should pay special attention to your presentation in a second, because that presentation is, I haven't seen it, to be honest, but uh, I know what it's about. Uh, and I think uh, the, the, the great thing about what also uh, you vendors uh, seem to be, uh, hope, luckily for the industry, uh, committed to is to also offer solutions to some of the problems that the market sees, right? Yeah. So I have a suggestion that it's just let, let's, uh, th this is a pre-recorded um, uh, film uh, presenting uh, HP solutions and, and, uh, and your stuff. And then afterwards, uh, let's take a chat and see if there's some, maybe some questions or maybe I have some questions too, right? Should we do that? Sure. So let's uh, mute and uh, unmute and off with the photos and then uh, we can talk afterwards, okay? <laughs> All right. Hello everyone, my name is Kirk Lewis and with me is Pat Canfield and we are part of the HP Solutions Group. And today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about HP SiteFlow and how it can prepare your business for the future. Today we're going to have a bit of a role play where Pat's going to play the CEO of Fantastic Print and I'm going to play the HP Solutions Sales Executive walking through some common scenario and questions that print service providers have today and how SiteFlow and the available tools, tools of our solution suite can assist. Along with that, we'll also talk a little bit about how to learn more about our SiteFlow solutions and where to and how to contact to learn more about that. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Pat Canfield. Uh, Pat, good morning. Good morning. Hi. So uh, I'm a CEO of Fantastic Print, and thank you for the opportunity to learn more about HP SiteFlow Pro. Um, I'm a mid-sized general commercial printer uh, that has a diverse range of products and services, and I pride myself on being able to provide, uh, you know, be nibble and be able to address uh, a multitude of different customer situations. Uh, one of the most important concerns I have on a daily basis is how I can grow my top line revenue. 
And just as an example, I have a great opportunity to provide a short run medical signage uh, to a customer, a new prospect, and they are looking for me to connect to their system in an automated way. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what tools does SiteFlow have to help me connect to their web portal? Oh, that's a great question, Pat, and definitely a lot of common uh, commonality there with some of our customers looking to break into this print-on-demand, short-term, short time frame, uh, short turnaround time uh, type of world. Uh, we have a number of applications available inside of our solution suite, and inside of all of them are uh, open uh, APIs that become yours when you're part of our uh, part of our Cyclo family. The the APIs uh, here are listed uh, on our developer portal, where it allows you to take these as your own and bring them to your brands directly to do custom one-off integrations directly from their web to print platform directly into SiteFlow. But what also is a really nice thing as well is we've done a lot of that legwork for you as well. As if you looked at the majority of the web to print platforms out there, the common turnkey ones, we've already done integrations and partnered with those companies to have that, uh, have that flow of work already happen for you. So depending on if your uh, company that you're working with has already uh, has one of these platforms or needs to do a custom integration, these open APIs that are freely available as well as their software development kits become yours and theirs to use to make that automatic connection from upstream into your site or platform. So really quick and easy and typically is done within a matter of hours or days uh, to be able to make that connection happen. Uh, do you have a few uh, resources on your, on your team to be able to look at API documentation? Absolutely, but one of the challenges I also have there is um, there, there are folks that actually work on multiple positions, so they maintain our uh, present workflow, all the different uh, software and hardware, as well as the IT infrastructure, as well as uh, maintain uh, demands for new product uh, adoption. Mm -hmm. such as in this case. So um, one of the challenges is being able to get time with my developer to um, also help and improve our current workflow. Well, that's a very good point, absolutely. And that's a lot of uh, some of the feedback we get from our customers as well. And the nice thing is those uh, APIs and that software development kit enables a quick turn to be able to make that integration done from an upstream system. But as you pointed out, making that connection is just one piece of the puzzle. What you also have to commonly uh, look at is when those orders are coming in, what are the other systems that I have to integrate with? I've got a billing system, I have an imposition system, I have to do pre-flighting, I have to do some sort of barcoding for track and traceability, and the list of interconnectivities kind of grows and grows and grows, and really what SiteFlow allows our customers to do is have a pre-integrated system and be able to provide a complete end-to-end -end platform from getting all of your work in and out the door in an integrated way. So once that connection is done to the upstream platform, as you can see in this example, orders are automatically coming in. We're automatically fetching those, URL, those assets from those URLs. We're looking at the individual order data about who sent it in, where it needs to be shipped to, how it needs to get there, and when it needs to be there by, as well as confirming and pre flooding that the asset is valid, as well as doing any file or batch level imposition needed to be able to produce this for you, all without anyone touching it, and based upon a simple product definition of how you want to produce this specific product for this specific client. So a lot of highly automated tasks take place once those orders are coming in and we've made that upstream connection. You mentioned about, you know, how do I add things like barcodes or, or job sheets or header cards? Well, SiteFlow inside of itself has that automatically built in. So whether you want to have an inline job sheet that allows you to have that barcode and track and traceability and a visual indicator of what I'm doing, or and also if you want to sort of start grouping and batching these like things together, SiteFlow automatically provides these types of job sheets and header cards that allows you and your team to quickly track and trace all of the items throughout your factory to make sure they're done on time every time. Excellent. That's excellent because that's, as I mentioned, one of the challenges is certainly uh, getting the best use of the resources that I have. And I have a lot of great uh, experts, uh, been in graphics for a long, long time, and I would really like to be able to allocate them to other more important activities than doing simple tasks um, and repetitive tasks that they, uh, that eats up uh, their entire day. So this is excellent to see. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we've seen is that, you know, you have these highly valuable resources, but they are, uh, you know, they are, they're not infinite. So you want to be able to put them to a high value tasks and taking these repetitive 
free press type tasks uh, outside of their off their plate to be able to have them concentrate on more value added services is definitely a key value add that Cyclo is able to provide. Now, one of the things that I run into as well is we're, uh, you know, a mid-range shop, so uh, many of our folks wear multiple hats within the production uh, life cycle. And uh, what I would, you know, what I struggle with is maintaining a, a high level of communication between those departments, but also helping them to maintain focus on the tasks that they're um, meant to complete. And all of this in accordance with a high variety of different SLAs that I have for my customers. So how would Siteflow help me with that? Oh, that's a great question. So one of the nice things about Siteflow is its batching capability. So automatically inside the platform, we're going to start looking at like attributes or like production uh, properties, if you will. We're going to start grouping those like things together and start building physical batches of work to be able to move through your facility. So if today you're doing hundreds of jobs a day or maybe moving to thousands of jobs a day, you really need the ability to sort of start managing at an aggregate level and not at the individual job level and having to touch each one of those. So once we move to this batch level type work, Cyclo automatically groups those like things together. And here's an example of 26 of these individual posters. This may have come from 26 different customers with 26 different ship to addresses, but Cyclo's looked at that order data coming in and grouped the, all of these together based upon these like attributes. So now what we're able to do is move these 26 different items throughout my entire factory as one physical unit, and then at the end of shipping is where they get uh, dispersed into the end uh, shipping addresses of where they need to be. What you're looking at here is a very simple UI. It really is the first time your operators need to interact with a job, which in this world is a batch. So here I'm looking at these 26 different items all grouped together. It clearly lets me know when this batch is due, when it's due out the door outside of this event, how many minutes it's going to take to produce it, and what type of substrate and other events are involved. Automatically, what would happen is this batch gets sent to my device for production, or I can simply select as an operator which one I'm interested in doing and send that down to the appropriate device for production. In this particular case, I can pick my 12,000 and away I go. And what's nice here is after that batch has been printed, I'm simply going to scan this individual green sheet, which is, the, which is the batch header card, basically, letting me know all of the different parameters around the things of this batch and all of the different items that might be inside of it. So always keeping up to date as to where all these items are, where these batches live, and when they're due at the door. By scanning that barcode, it simply tells my operator where to move this batch to next, and all 26 of those items in this batch have also been updated. So now it's going to move over to the guillotine cut station, and at which point I'm going to move over and change hats over to the guillotine cut operator. And here you can see I have a whole slew of batches that need to be done. And it's once again ordered on when I should do them, how long it's going to take to do each one, and all the different unique parameters of each one of these batches. So as you can see, I have batches of varying sizes, varying shapes, and various product lines. So as a diverse application as you are, and all your general commercial uh, print products that you offer, Cyclo is able to help narrow those down into, into buckets, if you will, of work to be able to quickly and easily manage a large amount of work um, in a very, very short amount of, amount of time. One other thing to add here about kind of looking at your orders and when they're coming in is key leading indicators at the top right hand of my screen. So as an operator, not only do I know what's currently due on my screen here in the order I should do them, but it also lets me know of how many are incoming from other events, how many are currently due today, how many I've done, and the hours worth of work that represents. So handoffs between shift becomes easier, communication between different events become a lot easier, and I'm always maintaining that all of my orders and items get out on time every time. Questions on that? No, that's great. It, it's, uh, I, I see it as a great way to organize the tasks for my different departments. Um, and it's certainly useful for each of the operators between shifts or whatnot to quickly come up to speed on what is necessary in the proper order to be able to produce to keep things on track, meet our SLAs, which can be very demanding for a lot of our customers. Uh, one question I have coming from a more of a management perspective is understanding the entire, uh, taking a look at the entire workflow and getting a sense of not only um, what level of activities and uh, that I have for my production, but also being able to pull maybe even some analytical data to understand uh, where potential bottlenecks may rest and where I can actually address them um, and, and, and basically optimize my workflow. 
Absolutely. So one of the nice things about Cyflo is that it is device agnostic. So while we do work uh, quite well with HP branded uh, kit, if you will, we obviously realize that there's more than one manufacturer of work out of devices out there. So whether it's a competitive device or a finishing device, what have you, Cyflo is able to send work to it and manage and track the production of those batches against those devices themselves in a nice screen like this. So what you're looking at here is our overall schedule across our entire print facility. On the left hand side is our devices and the status of our devices. And as those batches are being created, we're simply scheduling these batches against the speed and feeds of those devices to be able to make sure they're on time every time. Color coding it nice and easy for uh, different visual indicators as to where I am in the life cycle and allowing my operator and production management staff to quickly determine when these are due out the door and where any sort of bottlenecks may lie. What's also quite nice about the platform is the ability to turn off and on the status of these devices. So should one of these happen to uh, go down or need some maintenance on it, I can simply highlight the individual device itself and turn that off. And Cypher will then start pre-planning and moving those batches against other devices automatically to be able to help production get out the door quickly and easily. So all of this is quite nimble and quick and always live up to date as you're constantly getting orders 24 seven and we're automatically building batches 24 seven. So we need to be able to scheduling platform and an apps and, and, a, and, a, and a workflow system that enables you to be quick and nimble to your meeting your clients SLAs. And that's what we're all about here at Fantastic Print. So uh, this is an extremely helpful uh, tool for that. You know, one of the things also that comes into play here is, of course, as we're getting this work in through different uh, brands and, and different types of product measures, that we need to get it out the door in the right package at the right time with the right amount of items. Uh, at the right time to be able to get this back to the end user that ordered it. And here's where our shipping and reconciliation area comes into play. So while we can automate everything in the factory so far as much as possible, once we've cut all those batches down into the individual products, we need to ship them back to the individual user. So back earlier in the platform, I know I mentioned the barcoding system where we have these individual barcodes put up on our, on our job tickets and or putting barcodes on the product themselves. And once those batches are now cut down into the individual items, we need to reconcile them back together and put them in the right packaging. And by scanning that barcode, we're simply, Cyclo is simply capturing the individual item and order detail, providing a visual indication of to what that uh, piece of uh, work is in front of them, and grouping them into bins or pigeonholes for those operators to be able to group all of these things back together in an order to be able to ship it out the door. We're also capturing the weight and the cost should customs be uh, need to be uh, captured here, uh, what the order ID is, the actual ship to address, and any sort of unique details here. We're also allowed to be able to capture types of packaging. So should you want to have branded packaging for some of your brands or generic ones, Cyclo automatically assigns those for you, lets you know how many boxes you need and how many things need to go in each one of those boxes to complete the shipment. Once all of these items are individually scanned, these orders go green, and then we would make an API call to the FedEx, UPS, DHLs of the world, capture that tracking information, print off the uh, right amount of labels for the right amount of boxes, and then automatically send a post back to the upstream brand systems saying that, hey, this order has been shipped, it's on its way, and here's that tracking number. So not only can we automate the upstream pre-press batching in position all the way through the factory world, what we've also done is automated the communication, the label production, the tracking information capturing back up to that brand as well as through the shipping carrier to generate those labels in the first place. So the brands are always up to date as to where their items and orders are and your team in production is always up to date as to where these orders need to be and what's been completed. Oh, that's amazing because communication I see is a key, but being able to uh, knit all of these different activities together and work in concert um, is actually absolutely essential to build that top line revenue, which is uh, really my goal. It's the thing that haunts me each and every day. But as you walk me through all of this different, all the different tools within the site flow um, solution, it, it reminds me of my current system where I have many different IT systems in work. So it's, it's really challenging for me to, to maintain the equipment, the hardware, the software, all the different third-party vendors that I have to do to complete all these different tasks, such as shipping integration, or even the pre-press functionality. And sometimes I feel like I'm more of an IT company than less of a, a print company. 
Uh, I'm curious, how does site flow scale to meet my business demands as I start to grow? Well, that's an excellent question, and, and, and rightly so. I mean, a lot of our customers before coming into the site flow world have a number of bespoke solutions that they're stitching or knitting together and requiring their own resources to kind of make that communication happen. I think as you saw on the platform today, everything is pre-integrated out of the box. So shipping's integrated with imposition, with, uh, with barcoding, job sheeting, with pre-flighting. Uh, you name it, as well as tied into that order API, so you can have a one-stop shop to be able to handle all of your needs in there. With that as well as, uh, with it all running in the cloud, there is no special hardware to get, there's no servers locally you need, there's, there's uh, everything's infinitely scalable running off of our platform. So as your business needs grow, so does Siteflow automatically in the background. There's actually nothing for you to do. As, as the increase in orders and increase in demand come to your facility, Cyclo scales beautifully in the background of court and, and allows you to meet those needs without any additional capital cost. Excellent. Really, the only thing you need here is a few barcode scanners, a couple of terminals to view, uh, view a web page, and, uh, and, a, and a label printer to be able to print out those labels and, and some hardware to make the printing happen. That is great. Kirk, thank you so much for taking me through uh, this. Uh, how could I get more information on this uh, if I'm interested in uh, getting more details? Well, that's a great question, Pat. Absolutely. So we have a number of ways to get in contact with us. We have a website here at the bottom of the page. We also have an email address. You can, uh, you can uh, shoot us an email, and the local representative in your community would be more than happy to reach out and, uh, and set up a further one-on-one -on -one demonstration. Nice thing about that website as well, we've got some videos on there, some customer testimonials, as well as a number of brochures you can download and, uh, and read more about uh, all the different things that our solutions platform have to offer. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Kirk. This has been really eye-opening for me, and it, it basically excites me to the possibilities of being able to get more work in, the, in my shop, uh, be able to quickly and efficiently be able to produce that work, um, and also uh, no fear of being able to scale to meet the needs of demanding customers, but also new customers that, that I'll get on a daily basis. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. Absolutely, Pat. Pleasure is all mine and wish you the best of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I was just about to say that I'm sight flown away, but that is maybe a little cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> it's, um, um, I'm almost speechless, which, what, which, doesn't happen so often to me, to be honest. And I think it was a great way to to have this role play in presenting Sideflow. And uh, I must say that when when I when I see that presentations, I do understand why both you and Tim are so uh, into this because this uh, this for sure. Uh, and, and I mean, it gives so many advantages. And one of the questions I can't help think about is that uh, one thing is the technical side. If you say that everything is like browser based. How do you uh, how do you connect the devices? Is that IoT or is it? Do you have a server where you connect? I mean, also because you I understand with the print I, uh, print OS and we I understand that when you have uh, HP branded equipment that you have them connected, yes. but you also but you also have uh, integration with with a lot of other types of uh, equipment. So how how do you actually do that? Yeah, that's a great great question. Um, I mean, one one of the thing, one of the points that Kirk made in the, uh, the demo there was that we're completely agnostic. So it's nice if you're producing on HP Kit, um, but it's not critical. We've got customers around the world using Canon, Xerox, Heidelberg. You know, you name it. If, if we're, we we can send jobs to them. Um, Two hundred million items manufactured on a platform in the last twelve months in thirty countries around the world. So there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of brands now being manufactured um, on a large variety of kit. Um, we send jobs uh, via JDF, we send jobs via XML, we drop jobs into hot folders, um, and we integrate with, with, with devices in, in a whole host of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, all that's required on the factory floor is a browser. Um, yeah, but I was, I was more thinking that let's say that you have a let's say that you have a horizon binder and you need to send data to it, for example, right? Then uh, first of all, you have the job ticket, that could be JDF that is shot to the to the device, of course. But as far as I understood, uh, understand from uh, the presentation, you also get like feedback from the equipment, whether it's turned on, whether it's producing. And, and you know, that is some of the questions that we spoke to both the 
uh, Bob's and Tech Now, and also to uh, a couple of other people. I, I also gave a presentation on IoT, and I was just like that. That is the kind of connectivity that you see that you need to to get that production data back to actually plan your productions efficiently, right? I, I think I think um, for for many print service providers, that's the goal. Yeah. But the, okay. pra the practical reality is that they don't they don't they often don't have those devices today. The mm. large portion of print service providers they don't have course, those yeah. devices mm. today. Um, or, and and how are they driving them? Then it's either manually with an operator or it's, or it's using barcodes. Totally fine. That was just my question because you know I was just like, okay, so you have invented the magic trick to how to connect the non-connected device. You did that as well. Don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, uh, there's, not a, there's not a silver bullet. Mm. Uh, a question I also I also came to mind when I saw your presentation was uh, if you if if you look at today's uh, print operation, uh, I think that you know I, I always tell the story that you know if you look at a at a family-owned printing company of a medium-sized 30 people, 40 people, 50 people employed like 15, 20 years ago, a majority of the people working on the on the, on the the shop floor, right? And a few people in sales and administration. Today, it seems that everything is like computers, administration, pre-press, and a few people on, on the production floor, right? Um, and I was just, I was just wondering if uh, with the an analysis that you can get from from uh, print os and uh, and what you can also get from from uh, uh, from what what sideflow can do here i'm just wondering how important do you think it is for business today to be uh, to having this overview in relation to monetize from i mean let's say we have printer a here who has an hp 12000 not connected and we have another 12000 here that's connected how 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 big difference is it in, in productivity um i think from our perspective, we've taken a holistic view to workflow production management um, because uh, for, for many uh, print service providers, you can't just look at point problems that you've got. Um, and, and most of this, most a lot of the vendors um, you know, and, and a lot of the print service providers, that's what they tend to do. They, they say, oh, we've got a problem with pre-press and we've got a problem in finishing. Um, I, actually, Pushing the, the blame uh, on somebody else, right? Yeah. <laughs> moving the problem around. And what, what we've tried to do is, you know, for, for, for the cost of the uh, an, a single um, IT developer, um, uh, stop, that's just the, the entry point at least, um, we make a system available that automates that complete life cycle end to end. So, so we look after the file ingest, we look after the pre-press, the pre-flighting, the scheduling, the imposition, uh, getting jobs to devices, look after all your finishing events. Oh, and we're also integrated with all the major carriers at the back end as well. So for, for, for your average print service provider that has 60% of their cost post-press, um, actually just looking at uh, pre-press um, as, a, as a point problem or point solution it is not it's not going to fix it you have to look at the 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 end-to-end -end life cycle of jobs mm -hmm. there's, there's there's three key drivers basically for change the first one is around um, uh, helping print service providers reduce their production costs um, how do i squeeze more uh, from the people that i've got um, and potentially um, uh, either free them up to be redeployed um, or, or find out other innovative ways of uh, reducing costs there. But the second key driver is around getting connected to more customers. So, yes. um, you know, and that's where our API comes in, um, and that, that's that's where we can help reduce the cost of sales. And that, and, and that was, to be honest, maybe also what you you emphasized a little bit less in this presentation compared to our conversation a couple of weeks ago, right? Because I think that I think that what people should understand from 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 your solution is that it's an entire ecosystem. So it's like how customers can integrate their demands and needs not just to the one PSP but also to multiple PSPs right so so if you if let, let's say that you're a global brand and you need to have some consistency in, in how you produce and how you deliver you can set up different PSPs and make sure that you're using the same kind of workflow in how you distribute file and orders right absolutely and and and, and that's at the very center of, of our solution so you know all, all of the major print brands photobox impress vista print Pearson, Kellogg's, you know, you name it, they've connected to our platform and they're sending jobs to a network of print service providers. And we've also got some print service providers that are sending jobs to other print service providers. Mm -hmm. uh, connect once, 
um, to a single API gateway, and then you can route, route traffic uh, mm -hmm. out to many. That's mm -hmm. that's the principle. But the, the third the third key driver that I just want to touch on, if I may, is about reducing overall IT expenditure. Uh, yes. Because what, what what we've and we've taken a fresh look to um, uh, pricing and infrastructure costs, um, especially over the last twelve months, and we've completely rebooted um, and made the, made the site flow solution much more cost effective. Because from my perspective, um, we're achieving phenomenal growth rates um, for um, print jobs for our print service providers that come on board. They typically start with one integrated brand. Many now that have been working with us for two, three years, they've got 40, 50 brands. So they'll start with, a, with 100 orders a day. Um, and uh, some of our print service providers are now doing 50, 60, 70,000 orders during a peak day. You mean um, only only 50, 60, 70 thousand. <laughs> and, and that's all on exactly the same solution. So it doesn't matter if you're taking your first baby steps um, or alternatively, um, you're a, an extremely high volume producer. We've got a solution that can scale with you. And you have to, you have to view this as tech being the solution. It's the yeah. only way you're going to get transformation. It's the only way you're going to change. How, how difficult is it... Um, um, being an HP branded solution in 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 relation to getting non HP customers uh, as customers for for Siteflow because I I mean I, I think that looks awesome but I also sometimes think that people have you know there's so many offerings in the market maybe not directly competing with your solution and in, in, in that sense but so many solutions so I I was just thinking that okay I have chosen a Xerox platform why should I go to HP to get my my software right <laughs> well we, we you know as, as i said earlier we're, we're completely agnostic so each week we're getting um uh, uh, uh contacted by by print service providers i mean at the moment we're onboarding one doing mugs and phone cases another one doing cornet um uh, direct to garmin um uh, because we have to provide solutions to brands yeah because we want to be able to grow a brand community, print buyer community, as well as a print service provider community. And that's how we're going to get growth across the whole industry. And you know, that is also one of the things I like about the HP approaches, because I mean, you have always been very committed uh, to build communities with, I mean, with these group is one example. Now we talk about brand communities. And I think that, I think that you have a, an extremely strong, uh, I think you have an extremely strong brand in the printing industry. So, so obviously, uh, uh, HP, you will. I think that a lot of people will look your way. But I was, I was, you know, asking from the perspective of saying that, you know, if if I have a Komori offset printing machine, I would probably not easily go to Heidelberg and ask for a Prenect solution, even though it could work, right? <laughs> Um, and that's what we've got to change. That's one of yeah, the reasons yeah. why we're having this conversation today, isn't it? Um, yeah, okay. Great that's awareness great. That that's there, cool. is, there is a solution out there. That's uh, great. And we can help. That's great. Uh, um, Chris, um, you, I think you were a pretty good replacement of Tim, I must say. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, because I got the opportunity to talk to you a couple of weeks ago, and I think that people should go and see our old Skype session. I really enjoyed uh, the conversation we had, and uh, I know that uh, quite a few people seen it because the HP was so uh, generously sharing it on on uh, all your social media. So, uh, uh, also thank you very much for your support here. I hope that, uh, as I say to all my guests, that we will see each other in real person at some point after the COVID nineteen, and I also. I also hope, to, honestly, to be uh, you know to learn more about uh, Print OS and and Siteflow and and the solutions you do. I think it's uh, really interesting. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate. Appreciate it. Always. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye.